19 leverage plots. So if you have used SAS jump, you will um, quickly see uh, that the output shows a lot of interesting information, uh, some of which is like Greek if you don't know what it's all about. Um, but these leverage plots show up when you do analysis of variance. And what I'd like to do today is use them as a tool to try to understand ANOVA from yet another perspective. So this lesson is sort of lesson four, I guess, in our ANOVA mini lessons. And um, what I'd like to do is, is kind of explain uh, leverage plots in light of our basic understanding of statistical tests where we have independent and dependent variables and we're trying to explain y as a function of x. Now this kind of relationship is pretty easy to understand if you have something like a regression going on where you have a continuous x and you have a continuous y. Because if you have, for example, a bunch of points and you've done a least squares regression on these points and you fit a line to them, um, you can easily see that the equation for the line is giving you uh, y as a function of x. So I might write the equation different ways, but here's one way of writing the equation. So with a regression, it's very easy to see how fitting our function uh, gives us y as a function of x. This is clearly y is a function of x. We multiply it by b and add a and we get y. Okay, um, when we're doing ANOVA, which we're doing that focused on now, it's a little bit less clear. I mean, let's think of an output of an ANOVA. We have groups a, b, and c, and we have um, some means, for example. Let's say we have a mean there for, for a group a. And we have a mean uh, here for group B. And we have a mean, say, in between somewhere for group C. And we would typically plot these with plus or minus one standard error. And uh, or we might put confidence limits on them. Um, but basically what we would have is an output like this. So in what sense is this y as a function of x? It's not quite so clear, is it? Um, but with leverage plots, we kind of think about our data in a new way. So think of the uh, being in group A as giving a prediction about the value, the mean value, for being in that group. And likewise, um, this is a prediction for group C, and this is a prediction uh, or sorry, for group B, and this is a prediction for group C, okay? So um, in a way, you know, we have a continuous variable being predicted. So these are, these are estimates of mu A, mu B, and mu C. And underlying these estimates are observations, right? So what we can do is we can actually take our observations and put them down here on the x and we can ask uh, whether the summary of those observations, uh, in this case we have y bar a down here and y bar c moves about from here and y bar b is the highest one here, has any predictive power in terms of our observations, our y sub i. So we know we have the lowest um, values here, right? So we're going to have some values that gave rise to y sub i, and we have some values that gave rise to y sub c. We have some values that gave rise to y sub b. And now, isn't this looking a little bit more like a regression? It sure is. So that's what a leverage plot basically is, is a, a plot that looks like a regression of the predicted means 
we're kind of putting that on the x-axis um, versus our observations. And so really what we're doing here is we're saying, you know, this is the knowledge we gain uh, by saying, okay, y sub i is, a, is in group A. So, you know, this particular point here, for example, is in group A and therefore is clustered in these. And, you know, we're saying this individual is in group B and we're saying this individual is in group, or sorry, C. <laughs> I'm doing that, don't I? Because I want to order them that way as well. Um, and this is a member of group B, okay? And likewise with all the points. And what we're really asking is, does the knowledge of that mean predict anything about the values that those observations in that group have, right? And so if we had a leverage plot where we had not significantly different from zero slope, what that would mean is that those means don't mean anything. <laughs> and therefore, they don't really predict anything about our observations. Um, so even though the means differ, they differ in random ways. And so, you know, it's not really helpful in, in getting a slope significantly different from zero. Um, but if, the, if being a member of group A actually has predictive power for predicting what the observation, what value the observation might have, then we expect a non-zero slope. Okay, so, so this is the idea of a leverage plot. It's kind of turning the ANOVA into a regression. Um, and in fact, it's, the, it's this kind of basis that allows us to think about regression and ANOVA uh, to collectively as general linear models. Okay, so you'll see that term sometimes in SAS Jump and in SAS itself and in publications and so forth. And that's because we're kind of using the basic underlying philosophy of uh, predictive power of the knowledge of the group that it belongs to in both kinds of analyses. Okay, so that's a real simple summary of a leverage plot. Um, again, you might try yourself making up some keep it simple stupid data where you actually put in values um, for a very simple maybe three groups, two values per group and um, do this plot, do the regression, and, do, and look at the leverage plots by treating it as an ANOVA and compare those results. Hey gang, that, those are leverage plots. I think they're pretty cool.